<laughs> I'm rubbing my hands together. I'm not praying. I'm just excited to tell you about the Denifreps Terminator DAC. It's their top of the line flagship DAC. It's beautifully built. It's stunning. The feel, the buttons, the metalwork is just first, first rate. Incredible. Impeccable. I would use the word impeccable. A stunning piece of industrial art. Now the thing is, let's backtrack a little bit. Back in June, I reviewed the entry level Denifrep stack, the Aries. Not the Aries 2 that's the current model, just the original Aries. Talk about being blown away. I was 100% knocked out by that little DAC because it had analog like qualities. And I don't mean that it was softer or mellow or anything. It just it was engaging in an analog type way. I was more interested. I stayed more focused on the music with the Aries than I did with most, of, let's say, affordable DACs. No question, easily the number one best affordable DAC I've ever heard. So there's a few DACs in between the Aries and the Terminator, but I decided to go straight to the top. I, I'm not going to do every one. Oh, I forgot to mention the price. The price is $4,498 in the U.S. It's a lot of money. But I think the performance and build quality of this unit more, 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 more than exceeds expectations of what that kind of money could buy you. Because after all, there are far, far, far more expensive DACs on the market. I recently reviewed the DCS Bar Talk, which is $13,500 just as a DAC. And obviously there's DACs that are 20000 30000 Have I heard all the crazy expensive DACs in the universe? No, I, I have not. I'm, not. I'm not claiming to. But I've heard them uh, enough to know that what you get with a Terminator is a giant helping of what the top, top, top models can give you. The same as, no, I am not saying it's the same. I had some great times listening to the Terminator while I had the Pure Audio Project Trio 15 classics in my living room. Now that speaker is a big uh, open baffle speaker with four 15-inch drivers total, two, two per speaker, and a great mid-range and it had this ability to play loud effortlessly, just dynamics to die for. And I was using this recording of, uh, it's called uh, Explorations in Space and Time. It's an all percussion recording session. I was present at the session and I'm playing it on the Terminator with um, a Pass Labs XP30 preamp, a Jay's Audio CD2 Mark II CD transport, which is the only transport I used for this test. Um, and the amps was, I'm pretty sure the amp was a Pass Labs XA25. I was using some first watts in there as well. But these days with the, with the Pure Audio project, and I'm playing uh, this percussion record as, as loud as I, I could tolerate, <laughs> uh, uh, it just was so thrilling, so alive, so correct, so much like the cliche of being there, I just was sitting there <laughs> shaking my head saying, I can't believe how good this is, how satisfying it is, how much the, dr the big, there were big bass drums on this session, there was little percussion instruments, and the recording is uncompressed. And it was recorded in a, in a church, not a dry, dead sounding recording studio, but in a beautiful acoustic. And I could hear that that church is acoustic, and it was goosebump time. Absolutely, positively, that system just was checking every freaking box on my list. So anyway, I'm gonna get more into what I heard, but uh, let's just talk about some of the details. So Denifreps, including the least expensive one that I did, the Aries, to the Terminator, they make R2R resistor ladder DACs. Now, there are several resistor ladder DACs out there that are basically a uh, DAC on a chip, but these uh, Denifreps DACs are not chip-based DACs. They are true resistor ladder DACs, and inside the Terminator, there are a total of 1,000 resistors that are part of the DAC, and they are to incredibly tight tolerances, 0.005%. That is the heart of what makes this DAC 
so extraordinary. Now they were also using uh, these femto clocks, uh, massive power supply. I'm showing you a picture of it right now with a separate toroidal transformer for the digital part of the circuitry and a separate uh, toroidal for the analog side. Um, the build quality is absolutely superlative. Uh, it does high res, it does all those things. I'm going to list all the techie things in the description box directly below this video. And yes, it does DSD for you DSD fiends. It does native DSD uh, to a high order. Yes, the numbers will be listed below. Um, and the, the inputs uh, and outputs are, are the usual. It is a fully balanced DAC. Now, one of the inputs that you don't see that often is I squared S, which I was happy to see because the uh, Jay's audio transport that I was using, the CD2 Mark II, has, in addition to balance and coaxial outputs, it also has an I squared S. So it was natural to use those two together from the transport to the terminator. And I can say, yes, it makes a difference. Earth shattering difference? No. Not, not even earth shattering. I would say an audible difference, yes, but nothing to lose sleep over. But anyway, it was there, so I used it. But I also used the Terminator with its AES uh, <clears throat> input as well, and also the coaxial. So it is, um, I have no complaints. Oh, I do have a complaint. I do have a, a, a small complaint re regarding small. So like the little guy, like the Aries, the LED indicators on the front panel of the Terminator are really, really, really tiny and really, really dim. So you might not even notice that they're on. So the, the upside to that is they won't be searing your eyeballs from across the room when you stare into it because they're barely there and they're tiny. And the labeling below those uh, LEDs is really <laughs> virtually impossible for me to see. I don't have the best vision, but I wish the labeling was a little clearer and I wish that the LEDs were a little easier to see. But you know what? Those are my only real uh, quibbles with this DAC is it's just so beautifully done. I mean, ev everything about it worked exactly as I wanted. The other, th oh, the other thing is it doesn't come with a remote control. I don't know why. I don't know if that's an option, but the one I have does not have a remote control. If you need one, well, <laughs> You're not going to get it. You have to get up and press the buttons on here. But again, these are small quibbles compared to what you get. And what it is, it's all about sound quality. Before I forget, oh, another little side issue is I used, uh, for some portion of this review, I hooked it up, the Terminator, to my Pass Labs HPA1 headphone amplifier and just listened to headphones with this DAC. And I have to say, that was uh, another draw-dropping experience because I, the first headphone I grabbed to do this, which I haven't given enough uh, credit to lately, is the Biodynamic T1, the original version, not the Mark II one. I like this headphone. I've always liked it, but today, or when I'm today, but when I plugged it in to the past headphone amplifier and listened with the Terminator, again, it was like, whoa, it just had this open, effortless, smooth, yet highly detailed character that just superseded, superseded what I've heard from that headphone before with other DACs, in other words. So, yeah, I didn't spend a lot of time. I listened to the, to the buyer. I listened to Audacy LCD3, which is basically my favorite full-size Audacy headphone. I listened to the Sony um, MDR Z1R. Now, one little, another little sidetrack in this review is this thing. This is the DSP board. Now, this is the new version of the board, and uh, the distributor, Vishine Audio, uh, sent this to me. He said, you know, the one, the board in your version is the older board. I want you to try this one. I said, okay, I'll do that. So I did, and I got to say, I like this new board because it was uh, quieter. I heard deeper into the sound uh, stage. I heard more low level resolution. It was better in those ways. But there was something about the sound of the original board, something intangible. I did the switch a couple of times and I don't know, I just preferred the original board. 
I'm just coming down on the side of the old board, uh, but not emphatically so. I think the old board just had some kind of magic that this new one, despite its obvious advantages, doesn't have. So that, that's just me. <clears throat> my my long-term reference deck for the last few years has been a shit Yagrasal, the latest version. And it is a very, very, very satisfying deck. Um, I would say it, 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 it moved me, it engaged me, it does a lot of things really well. <laughs> but when I compared it to the Terminator, the differences were striking. They were not subtle. The differences, first of all, is that the Terminator is far more holographic, 3D, huge space, much better quiet, low-level detailing resolution. Uh, it is, um, everything just opens up more and that is part of that thing of sounding less digital and to my ears more analog subtle details in you know fingers on strings piano touch that sort of thing is just so much better on the terminator so if you can't swing uh, a terminator i still think the agrocell has got a lot going for it but uh in terms of engagement now the by the way i should say by the way before I, I uh, did not go back and forth when I first put the Terminator in my system comparing it to my reference Yagrasal. <clears throat> I didn't. I just put it in and listened and said, oh, it's better, blah, blah, blah. So it's been a, like a few months since I heard the Yiggy in the system, the Yagrasal in the system. And the, 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 the difference, the gap between the two was so much bigger than I expected in terms of air, openness, resolution, analogness again the gap was there so then what about the Aries I had to go back to the original my original Denifreps the Aries to see how it compared to the Terminator do they sound similar well yes except that the Aries sounds like a miniature version of the sound coming out of the Terminator everything got smaller the sound stage got smaller the dynamics got smaller the sound was leaner uh, it, it's, it still sounds amazing. It's actually, I, I think of it as a warm sounding DAC. Now, I, again, we're circling back to where I started here, I've lived with a lot of great DACs over the years, but I, I just think that something really special is going on with the Terminator. Now, it is, uh, to some degree, a modular design. So, as I said, with this DSP board, upgrades uh, down the road some of them, uh, I don't think the company's making any promises that the DAC might be upgradable for. We shall see. Again, that's not their position. I'm just saying since they did the board, I'm assuming they can do other upgrades down the road. If that's uh, important to you, you should check with them and see. Now, I forgot to mention something very, very important earlier on. Denifreps is a Chinese company. And... Um, but the, you don't buy this product uh, directly from Denifreps. The, the distributor is Vinshine Audio, and they are located in Singapore. And I will link to their website, to the Vinshine website, directly below. And the prices listed on the Vinshine website are in Singapore dollars. Um, as far as I remember, the, those prices include free shipping worldwide. But you need to convert those dollars, those Singapore dollars, to U.S. dollars or the country where you're, where you're located to know the price of the product. But since the price lists uh, Singapore dollars as dollars, you might think that those mean U.S. dollars, and they're not. So be aware that there's a conversion that takes place. Uh, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And I'm happy that you're here. And if you dig it, if you dig what I do, I made, I think last time I checked, 760 videos for this channel. If you like what I do, please subscribe. Hit that button down there. And when you do, hit it twice so that you'll be notified every time there's a, an amazing new episode of the Audiophiliac Daily Show. you got to check out the playlist. There's playlists for uh, electronics reviews. There's playlists for speaker reviews. Playlists for headphone reviews, for music reviews lots and lots of interviews, all kinds of good stuff there. So don't just look on the, the home page of the Audiophiliac Daily Show. Look around on those playlists. You'll find plenty to enjoy. 
now I think I really am done. So I will get to the point where I say, uh, if you dig what I do, check out my Patreon at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac. And as always, thank you so much for watching. See you again real soon.